I think this is the first time ever, right? It is. We're gonna take you through our expenses. We're gonna take you all the way from Grenada to Australia. 15,000 nautical miles. 10 countries, Neda, Bonaire, Colombia, Panama, no, French Polynesia, Nui, Tonga, Fiji, Vanuatu, Australia in 10 months. 10 months. First thing I wanna say, so thanks for watching. If you're just tuning in to see this uh, expense breakdown, we've got videos chronicling this entire journey and are gonna be posting videos of our entire journey around the backside of the world, if you will. So please hit that subscribe button every week, somewhere between 57 to 61% of watchers are not subscribed. Please subscribe right down there in the corner. It really helps us out. Ooh. Without further ado, insurance. Uh, we spent $1,000 on insurance, and that is just uh, emergency medical insurance. So if we had something to where we needed to get airlifted out of some place, it's really just catastrophic medical insurance. Uh, we don't carry sort of what you might consider to be traditional medical insurance. We don't actually carry boat insurance either. We had liability insurance for the first year we were out here, and then we let that go. So we do not have boat insurance. Next one up, some might be surprised how low this is. Uh, fuel, diesel and gas, $1,000. That's it. The trades blow you all the way from Grenada to Darwin. Um, we did not do a lot of motoring for miles. We did motoring getting in and out of ports. So car rental and taxis, $1,100. Uh, rented a car, I feel like in a handful of spots, that's most of it. Uh, we didn't do a lot of bus expenses. Buses are usually really cheap. We didn't ride them. A lot of the islands didn't have really such much of an infrastructure for that. Yeah, not super easy. Um, taxis are generally used for when we do a big provision um, and we walk to the grocery store and then we'll get a taxi back to the dock um, just to make our lives a little bit easier. We don't do that very often, but that's where some of those expenses have come from. Clearance fees, uh, $1,500. Uh, so this is checking into, checking out of countries. Some places it's totally free, other places will charge you for all kinds of different things. Biosecurity, uh, all, all of that stuff. Does, uh, that it, does that include when we've used an agent? Yes. Onshore activities, $1,700. <laughs> Horseback riding in Vanuatu. We did a, a beautiful cave tour, that was epic. We did coffee tasting in Cartagena, things like that. We rarely spend money on, on land or on water activities, but every once in a while, it's just so worth it. Film and editing, $1,900. Um, and this is actually not any big ticket stuff. There aren't any cameras in here. Uh, this is uh, expenses for software that we use. We bought a couple of uh, GoPro mods in Papiete. Yeah, we have a subscription to Epidemic Sound and Premiere Pro. We've got the um, Adobe Suite which is great, totally worth the investment. Something that was higher up the list than I thought, $2,000 on digital onboard entertainment. So this is renting a movie, buying a book. I watch the occasional sporting event, not, I mean, I get it as cheaply as possible, but uh, um, most of that is Amazon videos. Yeah, that's a, that was a shocker to me when I saw that. You know, it's like, oh, $3.99, who cares? Just buy it or rent it, but man, that does add up. That was a much bigger number than I thought it was going to be. So that was nickel dimey. One thing that was all at once, scuba gear. We geared up on scuba stuff in Panama and then have been, you know, now when we go scuba diving, there isn't an incremental expense. We have our own tank, our own dive compressor, etc. But scuba was $2,800. And I got certified in Bonaire. Yeah. So all that goes into yeah. that $2,800. Yeah. 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 But again, definitely worth the investment. It just changes your life to be able to be under that water. Next up, the Panama Canal. Uh, so maybe our single most expensive day. Uh, $3,400 on the canal. Uh, a little bit of that goes, we used an agent. Uh, most of that goes just straight to the canal. Yeah, and again, uh, using the agent, we had to pay a little bit extra for that service, but it was so worth it. Call this communication, really what this is, is Starlink and Garmin. We spent $3,400. 
Um, Starlink is not cheap, and then there are times where we are offshore and we're using data. Uh, we try to be sparing in that, but there's a it's two bucks a gig and it adds up. Starlink and the Garmin, though, are two things that you should not leave shore without. Obviously, people have been traveling the world without the internet on boats for a long time. Why would you, I mean, why would you now? If you have a family. Yeah. Next up, boat parts, forty two hundred dollars. Uh, Mostly this is nickel dimey stuff, fuel filters, water filters, D rings, all the odd line here and there. Uh, probably the biggest purchase in here was uh, I swapped out the motor for the water maker uh, in Panama. Uh, combined that with shipping and that was close to a thousand dollars right there. But uh, mostly this is just day to day spares that you go through on a boat. This is not an overhaul or any kind of major work. This is just keeping the boat floating from Grenada to Australia. Marinas, marinas $4,500. Uh, and if you've been watching our channel, you know we do not go to marinas. We don't go to marinas very often. Uh, the biggest one was in Panama. We sat in Shelter Bay for a while. Almost a month there. It, it might have ended up being more. It was a long time. Uh, and then briefly in Fiji, uh, but it just adds up fast. Yeah. That could easily make or break a budget out here, staying in marinas. They, they get expensive fast. Yeah, yeah. We prefer to be on the hook for the freedom of it and also for the budget. Yep. Yeah. Next category, I, I call it miscellaneous. You can call it, uh, or non-perishables miscellaneous. Uh, it's sort of everything else, all shopping things, anything that goes for like living on the boat or clothes for a family for or uh, you know, anything like that, sort of a catch-all shopping, non-perishables category, $6,300. Um, I don't even know what we bought. And you were the one that bought most of it. I did. <laughs> uh, all right, two left, the two biggies, uh, both are food. Restaurants was $9,000. Um, it adds up, there's sort of two kinds of meals out, I would say. One is the kind that is um, we like to do where it's you're in a new place, it's a new experience, you've researched something and you want to go broaden your horizon by eating out at XYZ place. That's great. That's part of why we're out here. That's it's one, a, yeah. one of the things I'm so excited about where we're going is to experience the food culture. So that's great. Yeah. Uh, the other one is when you're just tired and it's five o'clock and you don't want to make a meal and then you end up going out. Uh, just for calories. Just for calories, so we like to say, and we try to minimize that, but you know, $9,000 over 10 months, so it's almost $1,000 a month. You can divide that out, um, adds up. Yeah, and does that include um, happy hours out at Mars? Happy hours out. Yeah. So that's any, any happy hours so off the boat. Food yeah. and drinks off the boat. Food and drinks off the boat. And then the last one, groceries. Uh, we spent $13,000 on groceries. Man, having a pre-teenage boy, whew, eating us out of house and home. Most all this stuff you could do less expensive, you could do more expensive. Uh, but yeah, we spent 13,000 on both groceries. Uh, I'm gonna show you the by month expense. Um, it's interesting, you can see where we were in Panama and then it goes down. Uh, and then you can see we spent a more, bit more money when we got to Tahiti to, to do some reprovisioning and then it goes down again. So the lumpiness, you know, if you're out here, it's going to be lumpy. It's One not. other thing, um, we excluded, uh, Kyron and I took a trip down to Patagonia, uh, excluded that. That's just not a sailing related expense. Um, so, you know, obviously if you're flying home or whatever else, we didn't fly home in this period, but stuff like that adds up quick when you're getting onto airplanes. The only time we got an airplane was for Kyron and I to go to Patagonia. Um, so grand total of over $57,000. Um, and that was with a boat that was ready to go from Grenada and it's not including any of the expenses here in Australia. It's not, so it's really travel expenses with a boat that was ready to go over 10 months. 10 months, halfway around the world, $57,000. I will say one thing, in that $57,000 uh, there is almost no marine professional work. That adds up extremely fast. 
mostly because that's when we've just been fortunate about you know what we've needed to do on the boat in that time period. Uh, I paid for a little bit of welding in Panama. I think that's the only marine ex ex professional expenses. That would add up lightning fast. It's added up lightning fast for us when we were in Florida. Gotta get a good worker on the boat. Do it yourself, you yeah. know, you gotta, it's not always easy, it's not always efficient, but. The only way it doesn't get done. Yeah, is if you give up. That's you right. Know, keep working at it. Um, leave us a note, ask us a question. We've been full transparency here. If you want us to dig into any of these categories a little bit more or uh, flesh stuff out, we're happy to do that. Hit that subscribe button. We're gonna go all the way around the other side Come along for the journey with us. The other side of the world, he means. <laughs> what else would I mean? Long way around. I don't know. You got me confused. Join us next week as we go for more adventuring. Yeah, thank you. And crack up a bit.